Right now on Hoosier News Source, we'll tell you how to stay safe on spring break and more on what media school students are doing to enforce diversity in the workplace. And I have your spring break and IU basketball forecast. Hoosier News Source starts now. Hello and welcome to Hoosier News Source. I'm Lexi Vanetti. To start this week's show, our Caroline Clare joins us in studio with a look at weather. Caroline? Thanks, Lexi. This past Sunday, there were multiple tornadoes reported in the southeastern United States. A deadly EF4 tornado was produced in this outbreak with winds up to 170 miles per hour and resulting in a devastating 23 fatalities. This was the deadliest tornado since the 2013 Moore, Oklahoma tornado. This picture, courtesy of the Birmingham National Weather Service office, shows the damage from the Lee County tornado. Now, as we look into the end of the week, if you're planning on traveling for spring break, on Thursday there will be a mix of rain and snow in the morning, so if you are going home or traveling on Thursday, the roads may be slick with a 60% chance of precipitation. Friday, a little bit of rain and snow in the morning, and then um, Saturday there will be storms around 10 p.m. If you are planning to stay in town to support our men's basketball team this, sat this Sunday, excuse me, against Rutgers. Um, there will be precipitation in the morning, but by 10 a.m. most of it should be gone. And um, noon when the game starts will be around 52. And at 2 p.m. around the game ending about 53. And it is consistently windy during this entire time. So a light coat or a jacket should be sufficient. And that's it for the weather this week. Have a great spring break and hopefully the warm weather will be here when you get back. Lexi, back to you. With spring on the way, you may be seeing more bird and lime scooters back on campus. IU Student Government is taking steps to make sure students are riding safely. After several scooter accidents in the fall, the organization is giving free helmets to riders. IUSG is teaming up with Bird, Lime, Pace, and the IU Health Center for the giveaway. The giveaway is a part of a scooter safety week, which starts on March 25th. Vice President Maggie Hopkins says IUSG hopes to provide as many as 200 helmets. Bloomington is offering an online survey for residents to give their feedback about the scooters. The City Council is expected to present an ordinance regarding scooters later this week. As students leave for spring break, their homes are subject to break-ins. It's important when you leave town for a week to lock your doors, including basement and side doors. It may also be a good idea to inform neighbors that you'll be gone. Bloomington Police Captain Ryan Pedigo suggests buying inexpensive timers so it appears lights are on inside at certain times. And it's, it's always a good idea to make sure you pull your blinds as well. Uh, when people walk by and they can easily see valuables inside of a residence, uh, it just makes it that much more appealing to break into. So uh, try and... As you're checking things off your packing list, make sure to also check that you've locked all doors and windows. Diversity and inclusion were on the minds of the Hoosiers this week. Our Brianna Higgins went to Bateman's team diversity panel to gain insight. She joins us in studio now. Brianna? With all the diversity initiatives IU has to increase diversity, students in the PR and communications fields are still missing diversity and inclusion in the classroom. The Bateman Competition team hosted a panel to address the lack of diversity and inclusion in the PR and communications fields. The panelists talked about how they deal with microaggressions and code switching as people ask questions and took notes about how to take diversity a step further by also focusing on inclusion. One of the things that I learned from the panel was um, the importance of diversity and inclusion. So it's not just having diverse people there, it's about including them, valuing them, um, and really incorporating them. As audience members got settled in the Franklin Hall Commons, they were asked to fill out surveys that probed them to share thoughts on diversity. As the panelists described their experiences with diversity and inclusion in the workplace, students got up in between and asked questions about how to increase diversity and inclusion in the classroom. According to the Department of Education, IU's population is comprised of over 70% white people. As one of the speakers said, code switching is about getting to know your audience. 
So as a director, I need to make sure that I understand the perspective of staff, that I understand perspective of students, that I'm able to speak to presidents and athletics directors. So it's being a chameleon. Speakers also stressed that implicit bias is hard to avoid, but learning from others' experiences is important. A striking quote from the panel that most people wrote down was, diversity is inviting people to the party, inclusion is asking them to dance. For more information, check out their website. Some more campus news, SPIA has acquired a new name as of Monday. The School of Public and Environmental Affairs is now the O'Neill School. This name change will take place at both the Bloomington and IUPUI campuses. Paul H. O'Neill, an IU alumnus, gifted the school with $30 million. O'Neill pursued careers in the private and public sectors, and his gift will allow for a Dean's Initiative Fund, three faculty chair positions, a scholarship program, and much more. Coming up, our global report with updates from around the world. Stay with us. Welcome back to Hoosier News Source. Now let's take a look at stories people are talking about around the globe with this week's edition of The Global Report. Larmy? We open tonight in Southeast Australia where wildfires have been raging. This incredible video shows someone driving through burning trees on both sides of the road. Local government officials say that blaze has spread to more than 28,000 acres and much of the park and the area to its south has been evacuated. It's one of several wildfires sweeping through Australia's Victoria state. And officials say at least 19 fires are burning, but that, but that they are hopeful that better weather and possible rain later in the week will help firefighters bring down the blazes. Despite a very real risk of arrest, Juan Guaido has arrived back in Venezuela after being away for a week. The self-declared president of Venezuela was met with cheers and chants from his supporters after he touched down on Monday. The 35-year-old emerged from virtual obscurity to become a global figure in the fight against embattled Venezuelan President Maduro. But his role in that fight has made him a target of Maduro's government. A travel ban was imposed on Guaido, stating that he could not and should not leave Venezuela. Guaido ignored the travel ban, visiting Colombia, Brazil, Paraguay, and Ecuador over the last week to meet with their leaders in hopes of drumming up support in the region. Guaido's return in Venezuela comes as high-stake protests take place all across the country. Protests that he's called for and plans to lead now that he's back home. China has reiterated its call for the U.S. to withdraw the arrest warrant and extradition request for Huawei executive Meng Wanzhou. The Chinese government's also urging Canada to immediately release her from custody and let her safely come back to China. A spokesperson said both Canada and the U.S. are abusing their bilateral extradition treaty and took forced actions against a Chinese citizen and continue to say that this, several, this severely infringed on a Chinese citizen's legitimate rights. The U.S. government wants Meng to stand trial for charges including alleged fraud and violations of sanctions on Iran. Canada says they will allow the extradition case to move forward and that their courts will make the final decision. UK Prime Minister Theresa May visited the small English town of Salisbury Monday to address the people of the city. This comes a year after the first sign of poisoning against a former Russian spy in that very town came to light. British authorities were quick to trace the poison called Novichok, a rare substance only made in Russia, to Russian officials and condemned them for the attack. Putin denied the government being involved 
and in an interview released by the Russian government, suspects of the poison said they had nothing to do with it. Today in Salisbury, Ms. May congratulated the people of Salisbury for their resolve, saying it's been a very difficult year. That's all for the Global Report tonight. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful spring break. Now back to you, Lexi. We end our show tonight with some important news for those planning to spend their spring break in the Bahamas. The State Department issued a travel advisory for the Bahamas due to increased violent crimes in tourist areas, saying anyone with plans to travel there should, quote, exercise increased caution, end quote. A main concern is sexual assaults that occur on commercial recreational water tours. So if you're planning on spending spring break in the Bahamas, please stay safe and be aware of your surroundings. That's all for this week on Hoosier News Source. For more campus and local news, visit our website at iustv.com. And like us on social media. Like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter at iustvnews. From all of us here, thanks for watching, and we'll see you after spring break.